So here we have the Bentley Nevada rotor balancing equipment and the rotor begins somewhat balanced and then we're going to add an imbalance and based on the responses that's recorded by the computer we can determine what mass to place and what angular displacement to put it in order to balance the system. Uh, right now the setup is just a couple of proximity sensors, a vertical, a horizontal, uh, they go through an oscilloscope interface and output is made on the oscilloscope in order to show us what's happening. So we begin with a balanced rotor and shaft and we're going to add a 0.2 gram mass at 135 degrees and this will be considered the heavy spot. So we're essentially unbalancing the rotor and we'll determine what we need to add to balance it. Okay, so we begin by turning the rotor on at a slow roll speed and then we're going to ramp it up through the natural frequency and see the response of the imbalance. So we just put it on ramp up. The ramp rate is set to 3,000 RPMs per minute and the max speed is set at 3,000 RPM. Alright, so here we're approaching the natural frequency of the system. You can see the response amplitude is getting bigger and bigger. And here we're at the natural frequency of the system where we get the maximum response. And then driving past it, we'll begin to minimize the response. So the oscilloscope is just outputting the X and the Y coordinates. Okay, here we have the output from the transducers and the data has been recorded in increments of increasing RPM showing the response vector and the amplitude is recorded in thousandths of an inch. And we see here that the software has correctly identified the location of the heavy spot when in theory the high spot should be this vector which lags the heavy spot by 90 degrees. So in this case we've added an imbalance at 135 degrees but supposing we don't know where the imbalance is or what the mass of the imbalance is we add a calibration weight at a known location, in this case 0.2 grams at zero degrees, and we'll run the system again through resonance to see what effect the calibration weight has on the system. All right, so we've added a calibration weight and we see that the response vector has shifted by a certain angular amount and by determining what the amplitude is and what that angular displacement is we can determine where the original heavy spot was and how much weight we need to add and in what angular position in order to correct the imbalance. Okay so we've determined the response based on the calibration weight and now we remove the calibration weight and we've determined that we need to add about one gram at 305 degrees. Since we only have the option of placing weights at 292 degrees and 315 degrees, we add half the mass in each one of those positions, and our equivalent mass will be located at 303 degrees, which is close enough to 305. And now when we run the system, it should hopefully be balanced and we should get less of a resonant vector. Right now we're at the resonant RPM and we can see that the response is quite a bit smaller than what we had originally. Alright, so here we have the response with the correction weight added. And we can see here that our response vector has changed from where it used to be. Uh, the scale is a little deceiving. It looks like there's a larger amplitude response here, but in fact, the amplitude of the response was reduced by about 50%. It's still not perfectly balanced, but we've done a good job to reduce it 